people. Member for Thornhill. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and let me begin by saying that of all the ill-considered, unsound, wacky campaign promises made by the Liberals in the 2015 election campaign, several dozen of which have been broken by this Liberal government, Bill C-45 most deserves to be broken or at least seriously postponed. You may recall, Mr. Speaker, that when the legislation was first introduced, the Liberals assembled five ministers. They trotted them out, sat them down at the table um, at the front of the press theatre just across Wellington Street to defend the proposed marijuana legislation. There they were, the Minister of National Revenue, the Minister of Public Safety, the Minister of Justice, the Minister of Health, and the government's fall guy, uh, excuse me, the government's front guy uh, for recreational marijuana, the parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Justice. This was not, Mr. Speaker, a celebratory unveiling of new legislation. It looked like middle school detention time. <laughs> there was not a smile among the group. No, the no. Marijuana Five sat grimly during the almost hour-long news conference, and not one of the ministers, Mr. Speaker, spoke the word marijuana. Wow. They contorted themselves and their talking points into more coils than a hookah pipe, talking about their concerns of vulnerable kids, of the risks and dangers of the product that they were about to make recreational, of attempting to engage in a price war with organized crime, and repeatedly emphasizing they weren't actually advocating marijuana consumption. As I said, uh, Mr. Speaker, not one of the Marijuana Five managed to actually speak the word. Instead, they stuck to Latin, cannabis. Since then, Mr. Speaker, it's all been downhill. And here we are with the Liberals cutting short this essential debate, this very important debate to all Canadians using their legislative guillotine of their Liberal majority. Now, Mr. Speaker, the Parliamentary Secretary has reminded this House many times, in fact, that in his words, we all care about the kids, we all care about their health, their safety, and their outcomes. And the PS has reminded us that he spent most of his adult life fighting crime, that crime and violence can be reduced in society through smart action. Well, we in the official opposition absolutely recognize this member's service, and we certainly agree that we all care for Canadian children and that crime and violence can be reduced in Canadian society through smart action. But, Mr. Speaker, we strenuously disagree that the Liberals have approached this matter in any way that may be remotely characterized as smart. The Liberals have rushed to crank out the legislation, C-45, but they've downloaded almost all of the real responsibilities and costs to the provinces and the municipalities. And from top to bottom, we've heard serious, worthy concerns from the medical community, from law enforcement, from small town and big city councils and provincial legislatures that the Liberals rush to legalize recreational cannabis by July 2018 is simply going too far, far too fast. Yep. Far too fast for effective education of consumers, young and old. Far too fast for thorough and rational training of law enforcement officers and agencies. Far too fast to think through the matters of homegrown marijuana in terms of volumes produced, access to young children, and a variety of landlord-tenant issues. The proposed federal law allows for four plants per home. Testimony at Health Committee calculated that Four plants of 100 centimeters height could produce up to 600 grams of marijuana. And that height limit, as you know, Mr. Speaker, has now been removed from the bill. No one on the Liberal side, the government side, has explained how 600 grams fits with the maximum possession limit of 30 grams. <laughs> now, the Health Committee also heard in evidence from the United States that where Colorado, in its uh, legalization, allows homegrown marijuana, Washington State does not, uh, an exception being for uh, frail medical consumers. The rather stark results, in Washington State, where no homegrown was allowed, organized crime's share of the marijuana market was reduced to less than 20 percent in less than three years. In Colorado, where homegrown was allowed, organized crime jumped into the game and continues to flourish. We learned last week that some provinces will heed the lessons from those two states 
and some won't, Mr. Speaker. Quebec's draft legislation will outlaw homegrown marijuana with a purchase and consumption age of 18. But there are other disparities in the area of distribution. Ontario says it will only allow distribution through its Liquor Control Board, as will Quebec. But Alberta is going to go the free enterprise retail route, regulated by provincial regulation, but with no set limit on the number of private stores. And coming back to testimony from south of the border, we've also learned from Colorado there's been a 32 percent increase in drug-impaired driving which brings us to the repeated concerns expressed individually and collectively from Canadian chiefs of police. These chiefs of police say there is no possible way, zero chance, Mr. Speaker, that they will be ready to enforce new laws for legalization of recreational marijuana by next July or any month soon after. They've pleaded for more time to properly train officers about the new laws, about the science, and the detail of what is allowed and what isn't. They want more time to certify an adequate number of officers to conduct roadside drug-impaired driving testing. They've also asked, along with a variety of other groups, for more time for public education. Without a delay, the chiefs of police warn there will be a gap between the actual legalization, what the Liberals originally grandiloquently proclaimed would be Canada Cannabis Day, before they backed off to a now vague commitment of sometime in July. There is a gap, Mr. Speaker, between actual legalization and the ability of police to properly enforce the spectrum of new laws and regulations. The gap, the police chiefs warn, will give organized crime an opportunity to exploit these new laws. And as Ontario Provincial Police Deputy Commissioner Rick Barham warned, for organized crime to flourish. Now, the Liberals claim, Mr. Speaker, that they will squeeze organized crime out of the marijuana market through predatory <laughs> pricing, undercutting street prices. The Liberal government of Ontario is talking about a $10 a gram price, of course with sales tax on top. And this Liberal government is talking about another tax, a dollar a gram federal levy. The street dealers, the distributors for organized crime, are laughing out loud, Mr. Speaker that prices in the $8 to $12 a gram range will actually put them out of business. On radio talk shows in Toronto the last couple of weeks, it was clear that both sellers and buyers of the market today believe the illicit market will continue to exist and quite possibly grow. A year ago, a Seattle, Washington state marijuana dealer was selling marijuana at less than $5 Canadian a gram. Wow. Coming back uh, now for just a moment, and I know my time is short, Mr. Speaker, to this Liberal government's proposed dollar a gram levy to be split, they say, 50-50 with the provinces. That's a non-starter. We know that's a non-starter with the provinces and certainly the municipalities who are car carrying the lion's share of the costs and responsibilities of bringing the Liberals' wacky campaign promise to too early reality. Mr. Speaker, as I said at the beginning of my remarks, of all of the ill-considered promises made by these Liberals during the 2015 election campaign, and again, several dozen of which they have reluctantly but realistically broken, Bill C-45, Mr. Speaker, most deserves to be broken or at least seriously postponed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments. Question and commentaire. The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, the Conservatives have this mindset mm -hmm. of the status quo, as if the status quo uh, is, in, is in the best interest of Canadians. And the member that just spoke just highlighted just how much the Conservative Party continues to be out of touch with Canadians and not realizing the need for government to take action. You know, we have the highest consumption of youth with uh, cannabis or marijuana, as the, my colleague across the way likes to re refer to it as, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. We have criminal activities today in our communities, in Winnipeg North, the area that I represent, where we have uh, gang members and others that are selling marijuana or cannabis uh, to 12-year-olds, 14-year-olds, and so forth. 
We want to see the hundreds of millions of dollars taken away from the criminal element. We want to see uh, tougher or make it tougher for young people to be able to have access to, to marijuana. And the Conservatives seem to be determined to stay in the past and not take any actions whatsoever. We've now had some of their more progressive members say, well, let's at least slow down. My question to the member is, why, when can we anticipate that the Conservatives will come to the realization that government at times needs to protect our children? And this is one of the ways in which we can actually do that. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. Well, Mr. Speaker, if I might use the word wacky one time again, I mean, that, that's, that's an outrageous uh, question. We on this side of the House, uh, certainly the official opposition and the NDP, recognize the inevitable. This Liberal majority rushing through using the guillotine legislative tool today to cut short debate is going to pass Bill C-45. They are determined to force it on Canadians, on Canadian communities, on Canadian police forces, on Canadian society, and they're doing it far too soon. They talk about, oh, we're not rushing, we've had exhaustive consultation. They're not listening to Canadians, Mr. Speaker. No. They're not listening to the advice of the police forces, of the medical associations, of small towns and large cities. This Liberal government, talk about being out of touch, is, got, is on a misguided crusade to impose the Prime Minister's ill-considered, off-the-wall campaign promise in 2015, whatever it costs to Canadian society. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? The Honourable Member for Longueuil, Saint Hubert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for his speech. The question I have for him has just come to me. Does he not think that the member for Winnipeg North, does he think he's aware that the member for Winnipeg North sees that he's being manipulated in his parliamentary work by spin doctors? Member for Thornhill. Well, yes, I, I might be a little more gentle uh, than my colleague suggests, but I think that this entire Liberal government, the French bench, all of those ministers that were wheeled out, Mr. Speaker, to defend uh, the, uh, the proposed legislation, certainly with not smiles, certainly with not expectation of great things for Canadian society, but to con constantly express their concern. They are not prepared. They think they can use predatory pricing to undercut organized crime. That's not real. That, that's, it's absolutely unrealistic, and we've seen it in, a, in American situations, and we know that it's going to hap happen here. Organized crime will use predatory pricing. We've seen the inability to enforce the illegal tobacco laws in Canada. I have schools in my riding of Thornhill in Toronto where they deal out of the back of, of the trunks of cars in front of the schools. The police enforcement has been absolutely inf insufficient because the, the, the burden of prosecution is simply too great. And I fear, Mr. Speaker, we're going to see exactly the same thing when organized crime rises to the bait and exploits the loopholes that the Liberals are leaving by rushing to implement C-45 far too soon. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Fort McMurray, Cold Lake. There's going to be a brief question, about 30 seconds, and then 30-second answer. Okay. Please. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank my colleague uh, for his, his wonderful speech, very informative. But the issue I have right now is we're allowing, or potentially allowing, 12-year-olds to possess 5 grams. And, and if, we, if we transfer the same uh, rules for the marijuana bill to alcohol, we would be saying it's okay for children as young as 12 to possess two ounces of alcohol. I just do not understand this. This is not protecting our children, and this is actually downgrading our society to a level that I haven't seen in years, or ever I've seen. This is, this is not good news. Well, member for Thornhill. Well, I, I, I thank my uh, colleague for his question, and it is certainly an area of concern. It's been addressed uh, in debate. It was certainly addressed at... Uh, at committee, um, and there is that contradiction between the capability of a home grow with four plants producing up to 600 grams of marijuana product when the legal possession limit is 30. Now the government says, oh, well, we'll prosecute anybody that's selling that or, or giving it away to children, but the fact that these plants are going to be into the home, kids today will, will learn from, from one another. When it's legal, despite the, the, the age, the, the the allowable age to consume, kids are going to harvest leaves, kids are going to experiment, and I think what we're doing, it's, it's the same as, virtually the same as putting fentanyl on a shelf 
uh, within reach of kids. They, having plans in the homes is just as wacky, it's just as unacceptable, it's just as dangerous for Canadian society. Resuming debate, the Honourable Parliament.